Thank you uh, for this terrific contribution to the MIT Class of 2011 Scholarship Fund. And many thanks to Doug Bailey, Class of 72, for establishing the challenge grant that inspired so many in the current class to give. Through the senior, uh, through the senior gift, our graduating seniors express their thanks to the Institute and its faculty, staff, and students. But I want to express our enthusiastic thanks to the undergraduate class of 2011 for having achieved this near miraculous senior gift participation of 76% by a very large distance, the highest in the history of MIT. Anshul, thank you very much. And now we'll mark a different sort of milestone in MIT history. And I, to do this, I'd like to ask the presidents of the Undergraduate Association and the Graduate Student Council to join me here at the podium. So on April 10th of this year, we held a convocation to mark 150 years since MIT received its official charter from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And on that day, last April 10th, we recommitted ourselves to the Institute's founding mission with representatives from across our community signing a new charter for the next century. Uh, for dramatic purposes and um, purposes of levity, we signed it on an iPad. And uh, for more permanent purposes, we signed it on paper in the old fashioned way. Uh, today, I'm very pleased to present copies of the Renew Charter to two of its signatories, the Graduate Student Council, represented by its president, Ulrich Ferner, and the Undergraduate Association, represented by its president, Rajesh Modi. Okay. Ulrich and Rajesh, on behalf of the MIT students you represent and the MIT alumni you soon become, please accept these plaques from the MIT Corporation as a shared commitment to stewardship of the Institute's mission in the years ahead. <clears throat> so this spring sesquicentennial has animated the campus, celebrating 150 years of MIT. It's entirely fitting, then, that we salute a group that has experienced firsthand more than 33% of that history, our 50th reunion class, the 173 MIT graduates of 1961 in their brilliant Cardinal Blazers. Much of what we celebrated over these last 148 days reflected accomplishments of your generation, the technological leaps, the scientific discoveries, and the now legendary companies that you brought to life. One of your members, as you've observed already this morning, has added extraordinary service to MIT to an already extraordinary career, as John S. Reed this year assumed the chairmanship of the MIT Corporation. John, thank you for your service. We welcome the class of 1961 back to campus. We thank you for your long-standing devotion to the Institute, and we hope that by your example, today's graduates will recognize the power of an MIT education and the pride and pleasure of a lifelong connection to MIT. Welcome back. Now I'm going to turn my attention to today's graduates of MIT. This is your day. Here in the stately embrace of Killian Court, we gather to celebrate your success. You have distinguished yourselves in courses of study that stand among the most demanding in the world. And for all that you have accomplished, we congratulate you. Now, while each of you truly has done the work, I want to call out two groups of people who have provided encouragement in many forms along the way. First, as mentioned before, your families and friends joyfully join us today. We welcome them, knowing full well, as Anshul described quite beautifully, that none of you would be here, clothed in your solemn academic regalia, 
without the confidence of family members and friends who embraced your dreams and encouraged your progress. This is very much their day too. Graduates, I invite you please to rise and to join all of us in thanking your families and friends. Great. And the second group, MIT's truly remarkable faculty who have devoted their lives to exploring and explaining the unknown. And they welcomed you to join them in the race to the frontiers of human understanding. The women and men of the MIT faculty have shared their discoveries with you, have ignited your enthusiasm with their own, and taught you the infinitely useful discipline of mind and hand. Let's thank our faculty. Now, those of you graduating today will receive many different degrees in a wide range of disciplines, but even so, you are united as our sesquicentennial class. The MIT celebrations that began 148 days ago have described the earliest dreams of our founding and produced provocative, sometimes even luminous, visions of the future. We heard Nobel laureate studded panels discuss the frontiers of research, joined by participants from around the world and in outer space. We celebrated remarkable achievements by members of this community from every background, and we renewed our commitment to strengthening our culture of inclusion. We opened our campus, we raced blimps, tested robots, scaled buildings, electrified pickles, and saw the wonder reflected in the faces of thousands of children who now want to be just like you. This semester's celebrations have also reminded us that our first president, William Barton Rogers, launched MIT with an enduring set of values. The spirit of mens et manus, mind and hand, of useful work founded on the finest science and focused on real world problems. A belief in the power of hands-on learning and a commitment to meritocracy, rigor, and service. From these principles in 1861, Rogers forged a new kind of institution and his new institute would shape and inspire a new breed of thinkers, makers, doers, inventors, and entrepreneurs such as the world had never seen before. People just like you. The graduates who poured forth from MIT dramatically accelerated America's industrial progress, helped win in a world war, made profound scientific discoveries, invented countless products and concepts that make people safer, healthier, more prosperous, more productive, and more connected. They designed exquisite buildings in thriving cities. They founded whole new industries and launched thousands of businesses that employ millions of people around the world. In today's precarious world, the technical changes that face you <coughs> may look different or more daunting. But the essential challenge for each of you is the same, because it is still true, along with the distinctive strengths you gain from MIT, comes a profound responsibility to use them. More urgently and in more fields than ever before, the world needs people with the skills and perspective you have gained at MIT. People ready to apply their skills in interdisciplinary problem solving to the looming problems of the planet clean energy and climate change, poverty and famine, the health of our oceans and the future of our cities, and primed to build an international network of collaborators to amplify their impact. People eager to deploy the historic convergence of the life, physical, and engineering sciences as a catalyst for new solutions, from healthcare to energy to new manufacturing that will also help stimulate economic growth. 
people with the insight, integrity, and creative brilliance to help bring intelligence to information, to pioneer new connections between technology, culture, and the arts, and to develop financial models to make our economies more resilient and less inequitable. People perpetually hungry for exploration, from mathematics to music to the moon, and people eager to teach what they know to the rising generations. This is the work we have prepared for you to do, and I hope that challenges like these will engage your brilliant minds and hands as you chart the paths to lives of meaning, challenge, and adventure. Poring over MIT's history during our sesquicentennial celebration, I've come to appreciate that, like the great dome above us, the institute we know did not just spring forth fully formed. It rose slowly over time through the aspirations and achievements of thousands of human beings. In fact, the dome itself, this iconic symbol of the institute, almost didn't happen. By the standards of 1916, it was huge, larger than the Dome of St. Paul's in London or the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. It was an engineering challenge, and it was expensive. The limestone and the labor cost almost as much as MIT had spent to buy the land for its new campus here in Cambridge. But the Dome did rise because MIT's then president, Richard McLaurin, insisted that the campus demanded a focal point, one that would lift our eyes and our aims to the sky and beyond. And so, graduates of MIT, as you go forth from Killian Court this beautiful day, you will soon come to know what every MIT alumnus can tell you, that our great dome travels with you no matter where you stand on the face of the earth. MIT, in its steel strong values and rousing mission of learning, discovery, and service, will always be here as a foundation and as an inspiration. And now is your moment to put its spirit and principles to work around the globe. For all that you have created, invented, explored, and mastered at MIT, congratulations, MIT graduates of 2011.